G'day guys, welcome to another episode of the Step in Injury Prevention podcast, uh, up to episode 8 now, so uh, hopefully you guys are getting something out of it. It's been nice to check the analytics on the podcast app and seeing that there are uh, still a few people listening to this. So um, if you are watch, if you are listening to it, do let me know, give me any feedback. Um, I want to make this as useful as possible for people and I'm uh, you know, getting some questions come through on the Step in Injury Prevention uh, Facebook group, but if you aren't in that group, but you do listen to the podcast, um, yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback. I usually pop a little um, question in on the uh, Spotify apps um, when you listen. You should there's a option to put in questions there, and otherwise join the group um, and send me a message as I yeah would love any feedback. So I'm going to continue on today with a um, answering the question that uh, Mario. Um, asked, which is um, the second part of it, which is specifically about the impact of running on knees and how to lessen impact um, forces of on the knee when running, because he's getting some pain um, when he's doing his 20-minute uh, runs. So yeah, knees are a really common area of stress for people who are getting into running. And I know when I um, was telling people that I was training for a marathon, one of the most common things I heard was like, oh, what about your knees? Like, isn't running on concrete going to um yeah d- destroy your knees <laughs> and um you know it's it's a fair enough uh concern for people as as there is that sort of um idea in culture that that running on hard surfaces is inherently bad um but it's fairly misplaced as there's again it's not high load and not high impact that um injures people it's how you get there so um just like my example yesterday of the coma um post coma patient versus um, Elliot Kipchoge, like if someone who has, um, you know, not had any exposure to impact forces before suddenly tries to um, run with high impact forces like running on concrete, then sure that will be um, more than the body is is capable of. And remember from um, previous episodes, we talked about the idea of kind of capacity um, and thresholds within certain tissues for how much um, of a given load they can handle. Um, so, yeah, if, if you're not conditioned to it and you haven't been running much before, then certainly this can be um, a, a stressful thing for the knee and it could be um, quite challenging. But yeah, I'll talk today about the big factors that really impact um, knee health and what you can do about it. So the first is going to be, um, again, looking at the kind of programming side of things. This is sort of taken care of because you've got, for Mario, we've got the 20-minute run. So yeah. Um, yeah, changing the amount of time and um, and and distance is obviously going to um, be the quickest thing that you can change to to change impact. But for you, um, that's kind of a variable that we have sort of set in stone. So we got to think about the other things. So with micro loading, um, what we talked about with running technique, the cadence factor is like thinking about how to um, get your cadence to um, like playing with the cadence can basically um, be a a nice way of modulating knee pain because as I talked about with the heel strike when you do get that ground reaction force coming back through a straight knee um, that can be um, a fairly high impact um, load on the knee joint Um, and so if you're going for a higher cadence shorter step length if this isn't making any sense to you um, go back and look at the um, episode I did about running technique Um, and I'll I'll do more in the future but basically if we can get shorter quicker lighter steps where you're landing with your foot underneath your body instead of out in front um, that's a really nice way of making every step um, slightly less um, impact um, and um, load on the knee so yeah thinking like that quick light steps so it's almost like instead of like pushing off into the ground and and um, this is a way of uh, my running coach suggested to me is is thinking about trying to lift your foot and having a kind of almost the quickest contact you have with the ground and if you do have any running technology you might see ground contact time as being something that is um, a measurement that you can um, get with certain um, watches or Actually, that might be with foot pods specifically, but the idea of ground contact time is definitely like how long are you spending um, transferring your weight when you're on the ground. So if you can get um, yeah quick, light um, steps where you're landing underneath your body, um, then that's a really nice way of modulating the amount of um, load going through the knee on each step. So um, with 
uh, surface is going to be another factor. So that idea of like running on um, concrete versus uh, grass is going to be quite different. So if you can, um, changing up the surface can be a nice way of just giving your body a bit of variability. Um, so you're you're giving it different sort of loads to adapt to, so you're not just doing the same thing over and over and again. But in saying that, like, you know, plenty of people, like me included with my marathon training, um, did all of that on concrete. And so it's not nice, or like asphalt, it's not necessarily going to be bad. But if you are having some um, issues, then consider trying some slightly different surfaces to run on, see if that makes any difference. Um, there are, like, some people say, like, oh, you know, running in soft surface is going to be. Uh, like great for your knee because it's softer but when you have a softer surface that does actually put a larger stability demand um, and that larger stability demand is going to impact um, your foot and ankle like it makes the foot and ankle work much harder um, and your hips work harder um, to basically maintain the stability in your knee and so if you have a knee that's aggravated by kind of side to side um, instability of movement then going to a soft surface could actually be um, one of the more aggravating things. So again, don't take like blanket statements don't work. And remember, this isn't, I haven't consulted with you directly. So I'm not sure what the um, condition you're dealing with is. But um, just I think what I hope to give you guys is just understanding what different variables. So what different things can you change that might have a difference? And it's going to be up to you to um, try them out and see how they feel. And remember, so um, Mario said he's got some pain in the knee. And so if you're not sure if the pain is something that you can push through or you should maybe, you know, be a bit more um, cautious with and potentially take time off, um, the first or second episode I did where I talked about different types of pain and the idea of irritability, um, it, it's worth going back and listening to that to see, um, yeah, if you should um, bring your training to a halt or if you can keep working around it. Um, so the other factor is going to be shoes. Um, and, yeah, running shoes, obviously, uh, are going to have a big impact on how it loads up your body. So part of it's going to be like how soft or hard the, um, like how much cushioning you have. So the um, one in the spectrum would be like the barefoot style shoes where you basically have no cushioning, no support. And then on the far end of the spectrum, you've got like your Hoka style. H-O-K-A is a brand that's been um, quite famous for just how like it looks like just insane amounts of um of cushioning, um, but often somewhat low support. And then you have kind of like your conventional like Asics and Brooks um, that do the very sort of high support. And so when I say support, that means like a medial arch support. So that's really variable and it's um, for different people and what you're sort of used to. So the big thing with shoes is like, if you're going to change to a different type of shoe, just try and um, change gradually in the styles because if you go from like barefoot running to um, like high drop so that's high heel um, compared to the front then that's going to really change up your loading and that that's often where we get injuries so with knees it's often um, when you do have that higher drop um, that causes to um, basically load your knees and your quads slightly more um, and taking a bit of the um, work away from your calves and ankles so i really noticed this i had an achilles tendinopathy or um you guys might know it as tendonitis correct term is tendinopathy um and i started wearing some heel lifts in already fairly elevated um shoes and then that really started to load up my anterior knee and i started to get some anterior knee pain so uh yeah it's just useful to know that like how much like how flat versus raised your heel is is going to make an impact and if you are running with um yeah shoes that are very high at the back that could just be loading up your knee a little bit and it could be worth um, playing around with some flatter shoes but again you don't want to make big changes because otherwise you'll just um like it's a, it's those changes if, especially with the running load that you're doing 20 minutes a day um that can be challenging so the next like the big thing that i think will make the biggest difference um is going to be strengthening so i'll again I, I do plan to get an exercise program together if there's enough interest in it i'll make that happen a bit faster um so do let me know and join the group and, and do let me know um but yeah you said here um increased capability of our feet calf and hamstring so yeah you're right those those muscles are important but yeah with um strengthening around the knee we want to think of basically um 
strengthening all the muscles that directly surround it. So that's going to be kind of quads and hamstrings are the big ones above your knee um, and then your calves and um, tibialis um, anterior at the front, um, especially ones that cross the knee joint. There's my timer. So that's going to be your calves, hamstrings, um, your quads, and also your adductors, so the muscles on the inside of your leg and then the ITB on the outside. Um, and the ITB is not a muscle, but the glute medius and the TFL around your hips um, are ones that we want to strengthen. So yeah, it's going to be strengthening the muscles directly around the knee, but then also the um, the balance and stability muscles of your ankle and foot and your lateral hip um, that then mean that your knee is uh, supported and lined up in, an, in a nice way because it is a hinge joint between um, that ankle and the hip joint. So again, if there is plenty of interest and um, if I do get some comments and <laughs> telling me to hurry up and do it, then I'm, I'm more likely to do it because um, I've just got a lot going on in my other businesses. So um, yeah, I'll hopefully that's helpful. So again, looking at your macro loading, your micro loading, your surface, your shoe type, um, your cadence, and then incorporating strengthening is all the ways that you might go around working with the knee pain. Uh, there are some funky like strapping and taping things that you can try. I think people kind of um, overestimate maybe what effect that has, but that's something you'd be working with the physio um, to do do so i didn't jump into too much detail there if you do have any follow-up questions about um that do let me know and i might even go into like some different types of knee pain and um yeah the the variations between what you might do for them if there's interest in that but i'll finish up today because we've gone a bit over time if you i hope you got something out of today um and yeah be like mario ask a question on the group and you'll get an answer hopefully this has helped some people and if it has considered um, donating some GST or GMT uh, to my account. I've got my Solana address there. Um, no one's done it yet, so you could be the first. That'd be nice. Um, anyway, hopefully that's been helpful and I'll see you guys tomorrow.